Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing, uh, we're catching up on a basic CSS one that was uh, added after I finished them. We're going to improve compatibility with browser fallbacks. When working with CSS, you will likely run into browser combat compatibility issues at some point. What does that mean? That just means like if you're using Internet Explorer, maybe there's some sort of code, of some element of CSS that Internet Explorer doesn't use, that maybe Google Chrome does, or vice versa, or something like that. Um, that's why it's important to provide fallbacks to avoid potential problems. When your browser parses your CSS of a web page, it ignores any properties that it doesn't recognize or support, and different browsers understand support different um, properties. For example, so if your CSS variable is assigned to a background color on a site, Internet Explorer will ignore the background color because it does not support CSS variables. So this is a CSS variable. Here we're setting the red color equal to red, um, which is obviously ridiculous, but in a real, like here, if you were to, if this were to be like, um, you know, the color that I like to use the most, it's kind of that color. So you would use this as the red color if you were making an application, if you were actually doing that. But here, they're just doing it like this, um, this kind of craziness for uh, demonstration purposes. Um, if it can't find any other value set for that property, it will revert for the default value, which is typically not ideal. And then the default value would just be something that you didn't set, and therefore your page would look broken on different web browsers. And so this means that if you want to, to provide, uh, that what you want to do is provide a browser fallback. Remember, this is CSS, cascading style sheet. So what we want to do is have a style behind the, the one that maybe we're setting using this variable. We want to have the next cascading level is one that's written in more like vanilla CSS. And therefore, when it, the browser, when the Internet Explorer browser says, I don't understand this variable, and then it'll just go back to whatever the next best thing is. And so you want to set that here. Um, so here we're just, we want to be able to just set, um, instead of having background be set to the variable of the red color, we can just set the background is equal to red. And this makes it so, even if this were an Internet Explorer and this uh, red background was um, malfunctioning, uh, it would still turn red after this one. And see, oh, if, um, if, uh, if I set the color here now, you see, it, let's say right now the, the red color, um, it, this, let's say that this was the color that was supposed to do. Now, what would happen if this red color wasn't working, this kind of darker red color? Well, it would have a fallback color to red. And so if this wasn't set here, it would fall back to red. You see, because as soon as I comment this out by pressing command and then the question mark slash uh, backslash key, this turns into this background red. Now, if I didn't have this in here, the the uh, thing wouldn't turn red at all. And so uh, that's the uh, methodology behind it. Let's run the test, see if it passes. Oh, cool. It passes even with my interesting variable in it. So yeah, hope this helps you guys and we'll see you in the next lesson.